Being a sports villain to a particular city can sometimes come down to one moment that changed everything for the team we're rooting for. Here at the AJC, we're counting down 12 sports villains that the city of Atlanta is not fond of. And in this case, it all comes down to one shocking play in game two of the 1991 World Series, which pitted the Twins against the Braves. The Braves' Ron Gant singled and had rounded first base, but when heading back to first, was lifted off the bag and ruled out in a move that would become known as the T-Rex tug. Our number five villain in Atlanta sports history is the man who did the lifting, Minnesota first baseman Kent Herbeck. I'm joined by our AJC sports columnist, Mark Bradley. Mark, how does Kent Herbeck epitomize the perfect Atlanta sports villain? Um, he was he was the wrong guy at the wrong, in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was, you know, kind of a, he, he was a big lug of a first baseman. His nickname was T-Rex, that's where that, or Rex, that's where that came from. He had, he had, uh, he'd been a very good player. He was in the twilight of his career in 1991. And he, um, he, he had even talked about being a wrestler in, in future endeavors. But he was there and he managed to pull Ron Gant off the bag and get an out that shouldn't have been an out. The, if, you, if you watch the replay, and I've watched it a few times, many years in having seen it at, when it happened, um, he, he gets lifted. He, Gant's momentum coming back to the bag, it's starting to take him off the bag. But Herbeck is, Herbeck's arm is in perfect position to escort him further. <laughs> How does how is that not an illegal move? I well, think is the I, question I, on everybody's you know, mind still. If you, again, if you watch the replay, the umpire is looking right at it. and he just He's said, right there. He He's like right a foot there. away. Yeah, and he, he has a good view of it. And he just said, no, the momentum lifted him off the, uh, off the bag. And, you know, I guess you could probably make an argument that that, that was the case. But, again, going, uh, going on what the CBS crew said that night, uh, Tim McCarver and Jack Buck said, oh, that's, that's a terrible call. And it, it was a terrible call. It, it wasn't like a, the key moment in the World Series. It was only in game two. Uh, the, Braves, the Braves lost game two, not, you know, they, and came, but they came back and they, they won games three and four in walk-off fashion, and then they destroyed the Twins in game five. So they, going back to Minneapolis for, for six, the Braves were really confident. They thought they were the better team, and they looked like the better team. And then Kirby Puckett had the, one of the all-time great games. He made a great catch at the wall off Ron Gant, and he hit a home run in extra innings off poor Charlie Liebrandt. And, uh, and so it's game seven, which was classic, and the Braves just ended up losing in a game that went ten innings and ended up with one run. The 91 Braves had gone from worst to first, and... I don't know that there was a whole lot of pressure on them that year, but it was a disappointing way for their season to end. Not that it ended on that play, but the way that series progressed. The, the series just, you know, the, the, the world's, yeah, it seemed like this was the perfect ending. They're going to they're going to be world champions going Storybook to the first. Ending. Yeah, oh, yeah, and and they were such a fun team and that was that was the first year in a long, long time that the, anybody in Atlanta had really cared a whole lot about the Braves because they were they had been so bad for the bulk of the 90s that nobody went to games, nobody watched games. And, you know, but all of a sudden in July and August of 91, everybody started going crazy and everybody the thing that everybody had to go out and buy at gas stations was the foam tomahawk mm -hmm. because that, that there hadn't been foam tomahawks before the summer of ni of ninety one. What was and that like for the city? It was even if you if you talk to any of the guys who were around back then, and and, and I was sort of around, I was covering, <laughs> but uh, you know they all say you know the night winning the ninety five World Series was great, mm -hmm. but the thing that they're going to that they will always remember is the summer of ninety one and just the way the the city reacted and it just. Everything seemed perfect up until up until they went back to Minnesota and and Minnesota I, had kind of Minnesota proved to kind of stump the Braves. Yeah, and and I think that's kind of the feeling that the Braves came away with and the Braves fans definitely came away with was I remember Louis Grizzard of, of the AJC wrote that well we're still the outdoor world champion because the Twins had managed to win the World Series for a second time they'd done it in '87 also. Without ever winning a road World Series game, they all, they won only in the Metrodome, which was famously loud and raucous, 
and um, you know, it, it, and it was also a place where it was revealed many years later by the Minneapolis paper, I believe, that during that World Series, the the Twins had turned the air conditioning blowers on when the Twins were hitting, and not when the Braves were hitting. So you wonder if the catch that Puckett had made against the wall against Gann in Game Six would have been a, a home run if the air, if the AC had been on, and you wonder if Herbach's home run would have been a home run if it had uh, the AC had not been on. So, but it, and it, it just and and then the, the Game Seven, the, you know. It, all of this goes away and no, nobody remembers a whole lot else about the World Series if Lonnie Smith doesn't stop at second base uh, on a Terry Pendleton double that, that should have brought home the, the first run and really the only run that the Braves would have needed to win the World Series, but it didn't happen. And it, it, it just seemed like the Braves could never catch any sort of a break from whether it was the T-Rex tug or Lonnie Smith getting uh, getting faked out by Chuck Knobloch at second base or Puckett or, or anything. Anything that happened back in Minneapolis was, was not going to go the Braves way. How much does the T-Rex tug kind of symbolize or maybe embody that? Just your your team in the postseason and you're, you're just thinking, come on. Yeah, I, the, Braves, the Braves fans, uh, of course, the series came back after, here after that game and Herbeck was treated... You know he was booed, and not he, he did. Not, he did like he did like nothing. He didn't do well the in the series over well. He had overall. one RBI, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And but I I think that you know he he just kind of became. You couldn't really hate Kirby Puckett because he was you know he was a great player, nice guy, kind of cute, you know, little, <laughs> but very a great player. But uh, you couldn't oh. hate him. But you but you could you could hate her back. Mark, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks to all of you for watching. Make sure you continue to follow along as the AJC counts down our top 12 villains in Atlanta sports history.